welcome back to another video. It's actually Saturday, which feels really weird to say because I very rarely vlog or do much work related on a Saturday. But first of all, I just feel like it today. I'm having, do I call it a spring reset? We're not really that close to spring, but I've just got this energy to do a couple of little bits around the house. So I'm gonna be doing that today. And they're the kind of videos I like watching. So I wanted to film it basically and bring you along. I'm gonna make me and Jay a cup of tea. He is actually working on the bathroom at the minute. I'll probably include this in like a separate vlog because we're very much at the beginning of it, but we are redecorating our bathroom and I'm really excited about it actually. But yeah, he is basically just doing some like filling in, taking off the old sealant around the bath, all those very fun jobs. So while he's doing that, I'm doing lots of other bits around the house. I did actually get some daffodils today. I try not to get the spring flowers too early because I don't know, I've really built up this appreciation for winter and how good it can be to just have that time to rest. So I don't just want to rush my way into spring. I kind of want to stay in the season that we're in, but I do love daffodils and they make me happy. And to be fair, they are actually, I'm looking out in the garden now, ours are so close to flowering. So if they're flowering in our own garden, then I can have them in the house. That's what I'm thinking. make a start on this reset to-do list I'm just gonna have half an hour of reading and speak about the books that I'm reading at the minute how I'm finding them I basically I really have had this biggest shift when it comes to reading and I think because I am trying to actively live slower it's almost like I'm allowing myself the pleasure of it and before because I was just so always in this mindset of being productive and that pursuit of like fixing myself there was no time for reading for pleasure and now I have that time honestly I feel like I'm just realising the beauty of books and reading now at nearly 30, which kind of makes me sad because I've lost all those years. Like I can imagine as a teenager, it would have been so nice to just read more than what I did. But anyway, we're here now, I'm reading now. Obviously I've got the monthly book club with my friend Molly now. So that does keep me accountable in terms of making reading a priority. But this month I even, I've managed to fit in a, another book basically. So. Yeah, I just feel really happy that I'm managing to do it. And I know that so many of you will be watching this and you're reading like 20 plus books a year. I mean, I, I see some people read 52 and I'm like, okay, that's probably not for me to be honest. I'm not like setting any of these big ambitious goals, but just exploring it more, give myself time to do it. And yeah, just really enjoying it. Before I get into these two actually, I don't think I shared a bit of a roundup on Milk Teeth by Jessica Andrews. That's what we were reading for February's book club. And I actually, it's actually after the discussions that I've got a new perspective on that book because at first I wasn't so sure, but now I actually think that it is worth reading. There's some really good themes in there, really good elements of writing. I just think that for me, like there's not really much of a plot to it. And I quite like something that is a bit of a page turner and you feel like, you know, you can't wait to get to the end of the day or wait to have that moment to start reading it. And it wasn't that, but it was a nice read. Um, so yeah, I do recommend that. If, if it's been on your list and you think it's like your kind of book, I do recommend reading. After that, I read oh, On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous. This again, I wouldn't say it has a specific plot. And it actually feels like you're kind of reading poetry, which was different for me, but, some of the writing in this and some of the moments that they spoke about it almost felt a little bit like a memoir and non-fiction but a lot of it really like you know one of those books that just it gets you like this got me and i really enjoyed it i really really enjoyed it i've literally just started reading small pleasures by claire chambers which i'm hoping to make a bit of a dent in this weekend i'm really liking it so far i feel like it's more of a page turner than milk teeth already in terms of like i want to know what's happening with the story and where it's going so yeah really enjoying it and i'm just you could probably tell by me speaking about it i just feel it just feels nice to read and to give myself that time to do it um which is something that i just didn't really do before so yes i'm gonna pitch up read this and then make a start just had a fatata for lunch let me show you actually before 
I put it away. I put some spring greens in and in all of the recipes that I saw online, none of them had spring greens. They, I basically started off with the base of, so I added my leek into the pan, obviously that starts to wilt down. Then I put the spring greens in. Then I added quite a lot of salt and pepper. Then I did a jumbo spring onion. So you could do like three normal spring onions if you like spring onion. And then I added some slow roasted tomatoes. And then with the egg, I added some mature cheddar and that was it. And it was so good. It was actually like, I'm gonna have to write that down and do it again. I am gonna have to clean up now because I made a bit of a mess. And I thought actually as part of this video, as like part one, I could share with you my condensed makeup. Cause this video is actually inspired by the fact that on Tuesday, I just had this moment where I was like, why have I got all of this stuff? I can't tell you, like I had drawers and drawers of makeup and I barely even wear it. I had a lot of toiletries and for some context, I did used to write a beauty blog and I used to just accept a lot of gifting. I used to buy loads of stuff myself and I really didn't think about the consequences of that or yeah, basically, I don't know. I've not really spoke about this that much, but I think sometimes because I do speak about living a slow way of life now and being more mindful, there is some guilt and a little bit of shame attached to how much stuff I had. I kind of still do have, but I thought I'm just going to share it because I think we're all just trying to figure out what is best for us in terms of the things that we have. And that is the reality of my situation. I had too much stuff. I was holding onto it for a long time. I think because I knew the monetary value of what it was. Like I used to collect things like Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks. So I'd have, I've, I've yeah. <laughs> Basically they're expensive and I think part of me didn't want to part with them because I knew that. And then there was also that guilt of like, what do you do with beauty products? I did actually find, so there are places that you can recycle beauty products. And obviously there are donation shelters where you can take beauty items. I'll leave links in the description box. I basically did a bit of a deep dive the other night. Cause I was like, I need to not have these things in my life anymore because they don't represent who I am. And it was just too much. Like there was so much stuff. But on the flip side of it, I also had this guilt around how I dispose of it, how I get rid of it, which even just saying get rid feels really flippant and like I'm just putting it in the bin, which I don't, I didn't want to do. So yeah, I just felt a bit like, oh, I probably should share this because it's something that I'm figuring out. Basically, I, I'm still trying to figure like simple and slower living out. And I guess that's what this YouTube channel is. It's like a bit of a behind the scenes as I do it. And what this video is going to be as well. Like I just wanted to be honest about the fact that, you know, you, I think that you can work towards and have the intention of striving towards being more simple, being more minimal, being more conscious of the products you use, the brands you support, but also not get it right all of the time, not kind of keep striving for perfect. Because I think in a way by doing that, and this has definitely happened for me in the past, maybe like three or four years ago, if you're constantly feeling like you need to be perfect with this, it actually just stops you taking action anyway. So yeah, I just wanted to share that. I feel like some of you watching this will probably already be past the point where I am. Some of you are maybe doing it with me. And yeah, instead of me trying to just paint this perfect picture that I live this simple and minimal life and I, you know, just have one thing of something which i don't even think is the goal anyway i think it's just being more mindful about what i do have um, and what i choose to keep buying but yeah i'm just not gonna be that person that paints that picture i'm definitely living more in alignment with my values and i want to share that more and i think that part of that is kind of having those hard conversations where you actually look at your behaviors and think okay why am i doing this why am i keeping all this stuff which was definitely me when it came to like the beauty products and how can I take the best action going forward? I get out my makeup because it will definitely make more sense to actually show you the storage that I've got now and what I've got left. I brought you a little bit closer because it makes more sense for you to actually see it. But basically I've had this acrylic storage for about seven, eight years, maybe even longer. And this was full to the brim with makeup at one point. I'll leave a TikTok video linked that I did last year where I basically did like the first round of decluttering. And on Tuesday, I did basically what was like the final round of it. This now, I've only got one drawer 
dedicated to makeup and then I've got a small makeup bag that I use day to day. So in this top drawer, the criteria for me was that it's either something that I've used recently, obviously it's still like safe to use and within its use by date, and or something that I think that I would use in summer or for a special occasion. So I've kept things like eyeshadows, like even though I don't wear eyeshadows day to day, I do, know, like I've got a couple of weddings this year and I like experimenting with makeup for that. So it doesn't make sense to just get rid of things because I don't use them every day. But just being more mindful about the fact that I don't need to have six or seven. Like I'm not a makeup artist. I barely even wear makeup myself. So yeah, I have kept some of my favorite eyeshadows all of well there's two from charlotte tilbury and they've just got things like i've got one foundation now a couple of products from Borean, like their cc creams that i use every day and yeah it's all just stuff that i actually use so i've not really got anything in here that i wouldn't use now which i've needed to do for a long time but it is that thing of all of these different elements that stop us from decluttering in a sense so yes, this, this top drawer is just makeup now. And then I've actually got a drawer completely free, which the plan isn't to add anything else in. And then in this drawer, I've got some sun cream and a little backup of a skincare product that I use. And I've literally just run out of, so I need to get that out and that'll become part of my daily skincare. And then underneath in this bottom one, I've just got some random bits that are not in the bathroom. I've got all of my contact lens solution stuff. A couple of skincare backups that I already use and know that I love that I'll just roll on to, similar to one in this drawer that just didn't fit. And then I've also actually got in here some of my Estrid razor backups. So yeah, instead of being loads of makeup, it's things that I actually use. I've been using this like this for five days and already like my mind just feels clearer because there's not so much stuff everywhere. Uh, so yeah really happy about this and then in terms of my everyday makeup bag I've got a couple of bits in here I've just got like my deodorant actually this is everything I'm using day to day so I just keep it in here I've got a couple of makeup brushes like yeah just everything that I use every single day and at least then I can kind of I basically keep this like this because if we're going anywhere else we're traveling staying somewhere for the night all that I have to do then is put my bathroom toiletries on top of this and I'm good to go so it does work out quite well. So that is my current makeup collection and basically what has inspired this video and this whole reset of the things in my life. And I'm gonna move on to my, I guess like my underwear drawer. Obviously I'm not gonna be able to show this on YouTube, but I will show the sock section, which will, sock section, yeah, sock section, which will give you a good idea of what we're working with because essentially I have let it get out of hand and I, just need to be more particular with what I have. So yeah, I'm gonna pop this away and move on to that. This is the unit in our bedroom. It's got four drawers. They're not that big, um, but yes, as you can see, this drawer is filled, it's packed. I'm just gonna be going through and looking at things like how often have I worn it? Can I see myself wearing it again realistically? And then thinking about the best way to dispose of it or get rid of it from my life. Annoyingly, quite a few of the things, I mean, a few of these things have rarely been worn. So in that case, I will look to donate and things like that. This is so packed. There are some drawer dividers already in here, which are working well. But as you can see, this is overflowing. This is ridiculous. Why, when I only have a single pair of feet, do I need this many socks? I just don't. So I'm gonna go through this now with the rest of the stuff and do a bit of an audit. <laughs> wow, the first ones I've picked out aren't even mine, they're Jay's socks. I'm just gonna tip it all out because I need to be able to see everything. <laughs> oh, I think that Jay's gonna be really happy about this as well because I'm finding so many of his socks in this that he has probably lost and doesn't know where they are. So at the minute I'm just sorting them out into piles and there are a lot that are single and don't have their matching counterparts so I'm making a little pile of these as well so hopefully I can find them a friend. The sock section is in a much better place. I'm really actually quite shocked about this. I just counted out 10 pairs of black trainer socks 
and I haven't worn black trainer socks. I don't even know how many, like over a year, maybe? I don't know when the last time I would have worn black trainer socks is. I've managed to cut it down to this because I was thinking practically about when we tend to do our washing, how often things are washed. And I even had loads of white trainer socks, which I do wear, but why am I not just keeping the best ones? Like I don't need white trainer socks that are stained, you know? So yeah, I went through them. I took them out each individually, made sure the socks were matching. And already this just, like my mind feels happy about this. So I'm gonna put this back, do the exact same for underwear and then move on to upstairs, which is gonna be the last one because you know, when you get to that state, like clearing out is mentally, like there's a lot to it. So yes, I'm taking it slow. I'm in our top bedroom. It's a little bit echoey. I hope it's not too bad in terms of audio. This is basically where we have a bed for guests. So anyone that is staying with us will stay in here, but we also keep clothes in here and we've got this. It's basically just an Ikea set of drawers. I have let this just not be organized throughout this whole winter. I've just kind of been shoving things in. There's a little bit of organization for the gym stuff, but there's just too much stuff in there for it to even not be overwhelming. So in this top drawer, you can't see how bad it is. This is, I will do it before. I've got thermals, random summer tank tops, swimming costumes, bikinis, pajamas. Honestly, this is actually embarrassing the state I've let this get in, but this is, this is life. This is the current situation. So ideally in here, there's gonna be a section for pajamas, a section for any thermals and vests and things like that, layering tops, and then miscellaneous things like bikinis, swimwear. I, I have no words, I have no words for this. I've just wiped down the tops. So I'm gonna go through and put everything on here. I find that this is the best way if I'm trying to get more organized or do any sort of clear out is to just get everything out to begin with, to see what you've got, then do a little bit of an audit. Like looking at this, I've got one, two, three, four, five thermals. It's just not necessary. So yeah, I'm gonna get everything out. I'm gonna get it out and put it into the categories that I was thinking about before and then see what we've got. More hiking socks. Do I need three pairs? No, I only really need one. So let me, I'll shove those over there. I've got a few of these drawer dividers that I think I got from Ikea maybe like three years ago and they come in different sizes as well so these will be really handy actually. So I'm going to use these in here to section out some of the different things and then I think actually I'm going to use this one for the drawer below which is all of my gym stuff. For some of these things I'm rolling it because I can see what they are when they're rolled. For others I'm going to have to stack which is fine. I feel like some people, I've, I've seen ways that you can fold things where they're all kind of stacked. Jay's done his t-shirts like that, but I don't have that many of an individual item and I'm probably not gonna fill this whole space. So it doesn't really make sense for me to do that in this scenario, but yes, I'm just gonna go through and either fold or roll different things. Someone is drilling or doing something outside. It has got a little bit quieter, which is why I've started recording, but. I'm really hoping that you can't hear it too bad because the light is starting to go and I need to, I need to get a move on. This is what it looks like now. So I've used this divider to put my thermals here, white t-shirts. In this section here, I've got tank tops, which I know that I probably won't need for like the next month or two. Some more little tank tops and layering tops here. I've got a bikini and two swimming costumes at the back. And then I've got three sets of pajamas along here. And that for me is just perfect. I don't need any more than this. And my new rule now with these kind of things is that if I'm bringing something in, it's because one of these things is no longer of use and like I really need to replace it. So yeah, that's the thing. I mean, these pajamas, <laughs> you'll probably recognize them. They're the M&S ones. My mum got me and everyone basically in the family them. They're not my favorite pajamas. They're a little bit ill-fitting, but she does like us to wear them at Christmas so yeah they're staying but yeah otherwise I've got one other pair of pajamas 
which will easily fit in here. I can make a little bit more room and they, what will happen is once one of these things are in the wash, it will get replaced by the other one. So everything in terms of layers, pajamas, tank tops should be able to fit in this drawer from now on. And then this is the current state of my workout drawer with, yeah, I mean, I've tried to, I have started rolling things up, but it's just got a little bit chaotic. And again, there is a lot of stuff in here for one body. So I'm just going to go through everything and yeah, basically think about what I need to keep and what I don't maybe necessarily need and then how I can reorganize it so it's better in here. I've just finished with this drawer and it's definitely one that could benefit from more drawer dividers. I'm going to order some more of the Ikea ones or try and get there at some point. But yeah, already it just looks so much better. And there was a couple of things that were in here that I've managed to put in that top drawer. There was another, there was an extra base layer that I really want to keep because it's a top that I'd also just wear. Generally, it's like a normal long sleeve top. And then there was also a pajama top in here as well. So that's gone up. I've got three gym tops to donate that either just don't fit very well. I've tried to keep and just don't work for me. So I can donate those. And the drawer just, it's not busy anymore. This is what the drawer looks like now. So in this back bit, I've put my exercise shorts because I'm not going to be needing those for another couple of months. So I can kind of rotate those and bring them out. These are yoga leggings, just normal leggings that I'd wear to the gym tank tops here, t-shirts here, a long sleeve top and then a zip up top and then I've got my running light here and then two random things which I probably do need to get out of this drawer but I still haven't found a home for them anywhere else so I'm going to leave them there for now but yeah just so much easier and then I also have two caps here as well that I do use occasionally and especially in summer so I can keep those there. All of the things that I want to donate or I need to take to like a beauty recycling place or figure out what I'm going to do with I put them in a box because I always find at this stage of doing something like this where you're having a bit of a clear out, I feel overwhelmed by the stuff that's there. And it always does confirm to me that, like this is why I'm doing this because I don't wanna add any stress or overwhelm I don't need to, to my day-to-day -day life. And that is definitely what was happening with those things. Like they just felt overwhelming because I wasn't using them. They weren't adding any value and I just didn't need to have them amongst the things that I do actually use day-to-day. -day. Just being sat here, sitting and honestly reflecting about stuff as in physical things stuff in the house and i did a tiktok about this because the book this one wild and precious life by sarah wilson has really got me thinking about my relationship to the things i own how they make me feel and the fact that i have just spent what is essentially leisure time in terms of my weekend organizing and decluttering and if I didn't have as much stuff, that wouldn't be something that I'd have to do. And it's just making me think about how much of my life I'm probably gonna spend reorganizing, decluttering, and that I don't want that to be the case. I feel like today, and this week in general, like in terms of the beauty products and toiletries and things like that, I made really good progress and I'm already seeing and experiencing the benefits of that. It feels good. It feels good to have less, to live with less, and yeah, I don't know, I've just sat here thinking about it and I think in the past I felt like, I think because I've been in a bit of a scarcity mindset previously, it's this thing of having to keep hold of things just in case you're not able to get them back in the future. And that is definitely, like I've definitely experienced that with physical stuff and things that I own. But now I'm also on the flip side, I'm much more considered in terms of what I purchase. So. I'm still in that phase and that process of having to undo all the years of buying that I did before I started thinking more mindfully and more simplistically about what I buy, if that makes sense. In terms of consciously buying things, I'd say it's been the past three years where I've made much more of an effort to think about, okay, am I actually going to wear this? Is this something that I actually really want? Like I'm more considered in terms of what I buy and that's definitely been the case for a while. But in terms of things that come to me in other ways or things that I've had previously that maybe don't fit my style anymore or aren't quite right, there is still some resistance when it comes to letting go of it. And I think that's why I've ended up with like a really full sock drawer. And basically what's happened is I've gone and bought new white socks but not 
got rid of the old ones to replace them with. Even though I've gone out with the intention of replacing my white socks because they're stained or whatever. I'm a much more conscious shopper, but I realise that I'm not doing that thing of bringing one thing in and letting one thing go. I struggle to let go of things. So I'm really just going to check in with myself with that because doing this today has made me realise how overwhelming unnecessarily it's been for me when I've been going in these drawers every day and just seeing that mess and that amount of stuff, like I just don't need it. So yeah, I've made a really good dent today. I'm feeling good. Thank you for coming along with me for a little reorganise and reset afternoon. I feel like I didn't do too much either. You know, when you get into the thick of reorganising things and you're like, why did I ever start this? I, I feel like I maybe just was about to get there and then it was done and I stopped. So it definitely feels like doing it in really small chunks one at a time is the best way to do it rather than like these huge reset days where you put loads of pressure on yourself to reorganize because it definitely is like a mental thing of thinking okay do i really want this do i not what is like the emotional attachment and things like that so yes but there will definitely be more of these kind of videos from me as we come into spring let me know if you've got the bug to reorganize after watching this these are the kind of videos that i love having on in the background while i'm just like pottering around doing like reorganizing or cleaning and that kind of thing in general there was something else i was going to say oh yeah what i was going to share is that on monday so the day after this video uploads i am going down to look i can't i'm really excited about this i'm going down to london and i'm doing a workshop with Catherine may if you followed me for i mean any amount of time to be honest i talk about wintering in Catherine may a lot her work has really inspired me when it comes to basically living more seasonally and leaning into the winter months. And I get the chance to meet her. I'm so excited. I'm gonna, I think I am gonna vlog it actually because it's gonna feel like a really special day for me. I'm, I'm already just thinking about this now and how excited I am. I'm like, how am I gonna play this cool when I actually see her in person? See, I'm really excited for that opportunity and grateful for everyone that supports the work that I do online because if they didn't then obviously I wouldn't have the opportunity to go down to London and do a workshop with her which is just it's a dream to run she's my favorite one of my favorite writers so yes that is me I'm gonna sign off edit this video and um then go and get some pizza with Jay thank you again for watching I hope that you have a lovely rest of your day whenever you're watching this and I will see you in the next video